Dawn French is the rambunctious queen of British comedy. She's one half of French and Saunders, perhaps the most successful female comic act in history. And for 13 straight seasons, she was the vicar of Dibley. She's also a successful author to boot. With every new project, it's as though a new Dawn is revealed. But for all her public brashness, Dawn is a remarkably private person. Private, but not exactly quiet, and definitely not dull. Now, this is a harbour. I mean, this I think is Sydney Harbour is pretty beautiful. Yeah. This is nice. This is gorgeous. Are we talking about, you know, uh, in another century? Long, this is where, long time this is ago. where Dawn French used to live, <laughs> around here. <laughs> it's a summer afternoon in Cornwall, in the southwest of England. That's a place called Place, and that's where the posh family here live. Can you see? It's a lovely. And place. Dawn French is shooting the breeze about the place she calls home and where she gets her inspiration. It's just that the air is good, the light is good, and my... Imagination is, is good. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Whatever's in the air here, Dawn turns it into laughing gas for the rest of us. You know you make me want to shout. <laughs> What is better than laughing? I, I can't even think of anything that is, to be honest. I know how much I have loved the people that make me laugh. So if I even have a hundredth of that affection from anyone else, I'd be very grateful for it. And when you fail, what is that like? Because it's so uh, instant, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, this is the sound of it. <laughs> That's the sound <laughs> that you never want to hear. <laughs> I would rather hear utter, utter silence mm. and imagine that they're just academic, the audience, or asleep, uh, than or a nice big guffaws. But that pity laugh, part of you dies if you hear that. Please don't let that happen in Australia. That just must not happen. Chances are Australia will be laughing as loud as it always has when Dawn next pays a visit. Miss? Miss? Are you a lesbian? <laughs> <laughs> miss, yes. we don't know what that means, Miss. Yes, we'd like to learn. We've loved her since she was the big half of one of Britain's most famous comedy duos, French and Saunders. <laughs> you like that, don't you? <laughs> One of our personal favourites. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer Saunders was and still is Dawn French's very best friend. Shut it, you wanker! <laughs> Despite Larger their differences. Lady, you? <laughs> Obviously, you're not ashamed of your rotund, rather lovely bounciness, your ampleness, your <laughs> your greater surface area. Why don't you the, the normal just people. say fat? Pardon? Why don't you just say fat and be done with it? Go on. <laughs> I think... Now go on. I say hello, fatty. <laughs> you thought she was a snobby git. She is a snobby git. She still is. Still yeah. is. No, she still is, yes. We are two very different classes, and that kind of matters. What class here. are you? I think I'm upper working class. And she? She's lower upper class. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get any of that. <laughs> was born in Wales 58 years ago, into a family that always made her feel comfortable about her size. And over the years, Dawn has never minded throwing her weight around for a laugh. Or marketing herself as a well-endowed woman who loves chocolate. So size has yes. has always been part of your humour. Is that because you take control? Uh, yeah. Are you talking about that size or that <laughs> size? <laughs> well, Come on, Liz, well, spit it out. <laughs> well, I thought you were talking about that size because there is a reference to this woman eating a lot of chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. I've eaten a lot of chocolate ever since I was born. 
um, uh, so yeah, I don't think I go a day without eating a bit of chocolate. Yeah, I've always been quite a bonny shape, certainly. Yeah. You apparently have fabulous breasts. I, I still had, did you say? Have. Yeah, I have. Well, you can see I have. You have fabulous breasts. It's got you use your eyes. But I may be shorter than you, but I'm more what we like to call stacked <laughs> than you. <laughs> but listen, don't feel don't feel diminished or lesser than me in any way. No, because one of the things you do say is when you see a flat-chested woman, yeah. you feel like you should apologise. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I feel like I did get both helpings sometimes. I do... I do feel that. Ladies and gentlemen, your new vicar. Hello? Geraldine. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> when Dawn took her God-given gifts to the parish of Dibley as its brand-new female vicar, it wasn't just a shock to the faithful. She's a woman. Oh, you noticed. These are such a giveaway, aren't they? The Vicar of Dibley was a step into the unknown world of a solo career, but a move that would make Dawn an international star. Here I am, at your service, totally yours, any time, any day. Although if you come to see me first thing in the morning, wear dark glasses. <laughs> Vicar of Dibley, 13 years? Yeah, yeah. A live audience? Yeah. Now, a lot of actors fear it, but I, I don't fear it, really, because if you make a mistake, the audience love it. And they love it if you make it again and again and again. And if you purposely make it again, you get a round of applause when you get it right. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> Works every way. And, but you were, you were played this role so much, I gather, that people actually you, you thought you were a vicar. Yeah, I have been asked to perform exorcisms. <laughs> um, I have. I've been asked to marry people, to officiate in their weddings. <laughs> people are crazy, aren't they? People, yeah, do sometimes think that I am a vicar. And it's quite interesting if I go to a wedding or a funeral... Um, because I feel sometimes that the vicar thinks I'm judging them. So I will normally say at Christmas or whenever that I'm having to shake hands with the vicar on leaving a church, I'll normally go, yeah, pretty good <laughs> for a man. <laughs> <laughs> and they say <laughs> they are delighted to have the approval no. of a fake vicar. <laughs> How mad is that? For most of her long comic career, Dawn was married to funny man Lenny Henry, a union that provided its own share of laughs, including their wedding night. I think in Kenya on your honeymoon. That yes. was a bizarre Gosh, yes. scenario. Blimey. Yes, we yes, we went to Kenya on our honeymoon. We were in the hotel and yeah, we came out <laughs> one morning and people were applauding us and uh congratulating us on um consummating the marriage, I suppose. They were, they were they were shouting out, We know what you're doing. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> we know what you're doing. Yeah. Which is they were right. <laughs> so how hot does it get here? Um, hot enough. I only speak in old money, so it's 80 degrees, maybe. Oh, sure. Let's go. Yeah, oh, let's because go not yeah. entirely. Thanks to nearly three decades of fame, Dawn can afford one of the best views in Britain, even if midsummer in Cornwall barely makes it out of the 20s. Well, it's beautiful. It is, yeah. It is, it is absolutely beautiful. I do get a little... Ch this is a chilly air for me, but that's is warm. Is it? Yeah. Now, I could be naked now and not mind at all. This is this is warm. This is what we call warm. In fact, this is what we call sweltering. You're hot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks. I think you're hot. Let's get it on. <laughs> For all her brassy sense of fun, Cornwall is Dawn's retreat. Her marriage to Lenny Henry played out in public and split very publicly in 2010. Three years later, Dawn married charity CEO Mark Bignall, who'd barely seen her on TV. Along with Dawn's adopted daughter, Billy, he's become central to her new, very private life. I have a husband who couldn't care less about any of that, and I have a daughter that really is massively unimpressed with all of it. So, <laughs> wow. it's quite good. There's no fake praise or... There's just no blowing smoke up your ass really going on in my life, I hope. And so I find I find it really inspiring to be here. And it's quiet. And you this is where you write. Yeah, it is, yeah.
These days, the public Dawn is known almost as much for her best-selling novels as she is for her comedy. And right now, she's working on her first romantic right, novel. Yeah, well, well, how do you write six Well, I, I Saucy. imagine the character and what she's doing, and it is a bit revealing, and sometimes I have to go and cool off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, if you're going to imagine yourself in these situations, you have to go there, folks. So, you know, I hope it's not too revealing about me. <laughs> I was going to say, what, what experience are you drawing upon? <laughs> uh, well, you do have to go to, into your own life, don't you? But I am, um, you know, I've got an imagination. I can imagine mm, other people's versions. Dawn's literary success has led to a career move she could never have possibly imagined. Distinguished guests, undistinguished guests, when Cornwall's only university needed a chancellor, they were deadly serious. It could only be Dawn. Marvellous people, dreadful people, and foreigners from Devon. <laughs> you are the new chancellor of what I understand is pronounced as the Falmouth University. <laughs> it's not foul mouth, it's Falmouth. Falmouth. F-A-L-M-O-U-T-H. It's not people with foul mouths. It sounds like I've got foul. a foul mouth, obviously, but no, Falmouth. Falmouth the University Falmouth, yes. is our first and only university in Cornwall, and it's an entirely arts university, and it's magnificent. But it's only been a university for four years, and they're desperate for a, for a, um, a chancellor. And so step up French. <laughs> and um, I, I remember when they asked me if I would do the job, I said, OK, we need to know what it really involves. And within five minutes of saying that, I was saying, I'll do it if I get a crown. <gasps> I need a crown, I need huge regalia and a robe um, made by the students. So this nice and loud so that everybody's looking at me. <laughs> and I did indeed get a crown. I hope you got a picture of it because it's bloody marvellous. I am Dawn French, right? The dwarfish fuchsia jockey child. Once Dawn has finished her latest novel, she'll be heading to Australia for a national tour of her one-woman show. If we're honest, boys are just revolting and horrid, aren't they? And really, we should just throw stones at them. And already she's dreading the flight. You hate flying? Don't like flying at all, take drugs? Great to be able to take drugs. For the record, Dawn is talking about sleeping pills. In fact, really, it's a waste of money to put me on an aeroplane because I'm not watching the movies, I'm not eating the food, I'm just snoring and farting. That's Well, I presume I'm doing the farting. I'm definitely doing the snoring. Coming to Australia is clearly not a hardship. It's no, just the flight, is it? No, I can't wait. I mean, and I do believe, and you can't tell British people this, but I do believe that there is a very uniquely willing sense of humour in Australia. There's such a welcome and such a delight that you rise to it. You just float on the froth of it, and that's what I like. Of course I like that, you know. Why wouldn't I? Thank you. Thank you.